Right at the back. Please put your hand straight up so that uh, our wonderful ushers will come and give you one. If you will look into the package, this is just a little um, something about our ministry that we put together. And I have one gift for you. This is supposed to be a gift for you. This track that we have out there, this DVD is a DVD of this track. This track you just read, this track you see. <laughs> and uh, we did a lot of research to make it visually appealing that will clearly talk about what this track is all about. So this um, is very good. And I was told that uh, this DVDs that we have at the book table, there seem to be some flaws there. So if, if this is flawed, please send to our office in Lancaster, California, and we will mail you one good one. So this is my gift number one for you. Aren't you happy? All right. Well, today is Shabbat, you know. So I decided to play Santa Claus. <laughs> Christmas comes early. <laughs> you know, God has called us to start a 24-hour TV channel called Angel TV. That's a brochure that you find here. You know, before I came to the U.S., I heard a lot about Christian television. And we don't have Christian television in the East, in India or anywhere else, you know. So I was always very excited about Christian television. And I always hoped in my heart, if ever the Lord would bring me to the U.S., the first thing I would want to do is watch Christian television. So, now you will be surprised to hear what I'm going to say next. So when I first came to the U.S., I went to the city called Cincinnati in 1991. Then I spoke at a conference in St. Louis. After that, the Lord told me to go all around the U.S. and Canada to evangelize the Tibetan people. So I went from St. Louis, I took a flight to Calgary. So from Calgary, went to Vancouver, and from Vancouver... I drove down to Seattle. So when I came to Seattle, that was the first city in the U.S. where my work among the Tibetans started. In Seattle, a very nice, wonderful Christian family hosted me. The first thing that I did when I got into their house is, do you have a television in your house? I asked them. They said, yes, of course. Is, do you have any Christian channels? They said, yes, of course. With all my boyish gleefulness, I asked them, if you don't mind, can I sit down and watch some Christian programs? They said, of course. So they made me a nice cup of tea, and I sat with great excitement to watch Christian television. And the very first program that I saw, a tall preacher came on the screen and for 25 minutes of his program he pointed his long bony finger straight at your nose and he kept on saying I have the faith for you to give $1,000 if you sow $1,000 into my ministry, now I'm not putting him to shame or insulting him in any way, I'm just saying it as it is so I thought, okay, for first few minutes is okay, no? But for 25 full minutes, he keep on pointing his bony finger straight at your nose. See, when you point at the camera, it will appear that he's pointing at your nose, isn't it? He never preached a single scripture, never preached a single word of God, but for the entire duration of the program, 
it just spoke about money 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 i th- i felt very disgusted you know television is a medium where millions watch and millions who are broken hearted millions who may be cast down hoping for an answer from god who tune in to that program and all they heard was give me your money give me your money i think if he was here tonight you would not be in the right anyway so i was very disappointed you know so i felt so disgusted i didn't want to watch another christian program so then i came to portland so when i was in portland i thought okay let me watch another program surely there must be something good not all can be that bad in portland i tune in to a certain christian television channel i don't want to name the name you know and from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way all throughout the whole day one preacher after another preacher after another preacher after another preacher came talking nothing but money so what is this one entire day nothing else they were fundraising for the ministry no harm we all need money isn't it to do the works of god you heard that our ministry needs money so after that i made a firm resolve i'm never ever going to see another christian program tv program in the us never never again so that was the end of my whatever little pursuit or desire i had for christian television so that was 91 in 1997 i was in trinidad it was the week when uh, princess diana met with an accident and she died i can't exactly remember the day but it was during that week one day when i was praying the lord jesus appeared before me and he said my time has come for you to begin the television ministry i said this is very strange because whenever the lord speaks he will say this is what i want you to do but instead of saying like that he said my time has come for you to begin the television ministry so i asked the lord what do you mean your time has come as soon as i spoke those words i suddenly remembered a vision i saw in 1987 i was praying with a few other prophets in a small village in india and i saw a vision and i saw a satellite just flying in the heavens and the holy spirit spoke to me your messages will go all over radio and all over television during that year in 1987 i was a small simple you can call a country bumpkin <laughs> hilly billy <laughs> now you understand ah huh? okay see i'm learning american lingo it was just like hilly billy you know so my ministry was just in small villages no one knew who we are ex- outside the boundaries of our, of our little village so for me to see the satellite and for the lord to say your messages will go all over tv it is too fast stretch you know i said okay if god says it it will surely come to pass so i recorded it in my diary that vision came to my remembrance that day so this is what the lord meant my time has come after 10 long years but i remembered also the bony finger <laughs> you know as soon as the lord said television ministry i said oh my i don't want to end up like that that man with a bony finger pointing at my audience and say send me your money send me your money send me your money see by that by then i'd already built a great dislike and disgust for television ministries so to get out of it i put a fleece out to the lord which i never do remember yes one of these days i uh, the past few days i said 
if you have a walk with God, you don't have to ask for a second confirmation, that confirmation. I knew the Lord was speaking to me. I see him standing before me. But I want to get out of it, you know. So I put a fleece before the Lord. All right, Lord, I will do this. But give me a sign. After the meetings in Trinidad, I'm going to go to the U.S. for another one week of meetings. By the time I leave the U.S., if you provide me 50,000 U.S. dollars, I will take it as a sign that you want me to do this. You know, till that time, the largest offering that I ever received in the U.S. was $10,000. So I was extremely confident. <laughs> the Lord could not do this, you know. The churches that I went to are all small churches, 20, 30, you know, and they can give large offerings. So I was extremely confident that the Lord cannot meet the fleece and I will get out of my bargain. So, I came to the San Francisco. That's where my meetings were. And in one day, one of the meetings, there was a mighty move of God in the church. It's a small church, you know. There were only about 30 or the most 40 Chinese believers. That's all. So it was a mighty move of God in the meeting. And then, the following day, I was leaving. So during the one week, I'd never got a single penny. So I thought, okay, now I'm off the hook. <laughs> so before I left, the pastor who invited me came and gave me an envelope. He said, this is your honorarium, your offering. So I thought, okay, how much can it be, you know? And then he added another envelope. He said, this is a special offering. There was a millionaire who came to the meeting. <laughs> a millionaire who came to the meeting last night, he was so blessed by your message that he gave this special offering for you. I said, okay, you know, sometimes millionaires are the stingiest people, you know. <laughs> The simple-hearted, the small churches are more generous in giving than the large churches, you know. This has been my experience. So anyway, so I didn't care much about whether it's a millionaire or billionaire. It doesn't matter, you know. So I put the envelopes together, went back home before I left. So I just wanted to see because I remembered the deal we had with the Lord, you know. And when I, when I opened the envelope, I was shocked. It was fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I thought, oh my God. Now I'm caught. So anyway, <clears throat> I knelt down and I made a covenant with the Lord. Lord, if you want me to do this, I will never do like what that man did. So I will not even ask my audience for money. You want me to do this, you must supply all our needs. If you will agree to this covenant, then I will do it. And the Lord said, yes, it's done. So, to make a long story short, we started a one-weekly program in 1999. So a year later, the Lord spoke to me to start a 24-hour television channel. And that's what this is all about, a 24-hour television channel. And it was another mind-boggling thing to me. You know, I struggle very much to produce one program a week. It's not easy, you know. It's not easy to stand before the camera. You don't have no audience. You just look at the camera. And you, Imagine your audience. <laughs> but I enjoyed it, you know. I enjoyed it. The only, my only problem from then till now is I have a problem with timing. You know, in a 25-minute program, 
you should preach for 15 minutes and then you pray for 3 minutes 18 minutes and then they spice up your program with a song with book announcement this announcement that announcement they spice up everything to total 28 minutes and 30 seconds so <clears throat> when i'm closing my eyes and praying how to know three minutes have passed by <laughs> right <laughs> so i came up with a, a plan so i told my associate okay have a long stick keep a stopwatch in your hand and just tap on my leg you know when three minutes are up so when you tap me i will know three minutes are up and it's time for me to say amen so the first day i was preaching and then i was praying i was praying i was praying seems like it was going on and on i didn't feel any tap you know then i ended the prayer 30 minutes i passed by I looked at my associate and said, why didn't you tap me? How can I tap you? You are my boss. <laughs> Say, you, you are a holy man of God. How can I tap you? That would be sinful. I told him, if you did it on purpose, that's sinful. If you do in obedience to what I say, that's not sinful. Anyway, it took him a long, long time to overcome that barrier. Anyway, these are all some of the things that we do, you know. So when the Lord called us to do a 24-hour television network, He gave me a plan. What is the purpose? See, there are so many television networks, you know, TBN, what are the so many television networks? God TV, this TV, that TV, you have Daystar, all this wonderful channel, right? So I said, why another television channel, Lord? And if you look at the brochure, you'll see the first sentence here. A prophet for the end times. That's what the Lord told me. The channel is a prophet. Just like I send a prophet to the nations. The entire channel is a platform where my prophets, my true prophets, will come on board and they will prophesy. They will speak the revelations and the words that I give. So that, that's what this network is. It's not just a television channel that preaches, teaches, edifies, exhorts, comforts, but it is a prophet an oracle of God. So I began to pray and ask the Lord, so if a prophet, so what is the job? So the Lord over the years showed me who are the people that should be invited. So if you look at this second page here, there are some of the speakers, ministers of God, who appear on our network. And on the second row, the first picture, you'll see a very handsome looking man. I hope you recognize him. Do you? Yeah, he looks very serious, you know. Deep in thoughts, deep in revelation. Our dear brother Bruce Allen. So, he is one of the men of God whom God has called us, called to network with him, to partner with him, to be one of the prophets who will speak on this network. And many of them that you see here are not big time famous speakers, you know, except for a few, but many of them are choice prophets of the Lord. Like for example, I don't know whether you have heard of this man of God called Randy Demain. He saw that in the third row, the third picture. So wonderful man of God, very humble man of God. And then there is another bald-headed man called Bernard Lee from Vancouver and Pastor Jose Rocco from Australia. All these are wonderful prophets of God who are not big time, big name prophets. So this channel is the channel that God has uh, told us to launch and we launched this channel in the US 
last year. So this December will be the, our first anniversary, anniversary of launching the US. This is available, if you look at the back side of this pamphlet, through the Glory Star network. So if you buy this Glory Star satellite system, which is very inexpensive, not very expensive, a one-time payment, for a one-time payment, you get about several uh, 75 Christian channels plus many, many radio stations. Unlike Direct TV or Dish Network, we have all kinds of other garbage there. This is only Christian networks. 25 uh, God TV is there, Desta is there, Cornerstone is there, TBN is there. Spanish channels, Arabic channels, Indian channels, and our channel, and Angel TV is also available on Roku. Do you have a Roku? If you do, so it's available on Roku, and then in all these other apps that you find here. So I encourage you to watch our program. If you are blessed through our messages here, and, you know, in a conference like this, we can't be here every day. We come for three days, we come for four days, and then we are gone. And who knows if you will see me again or not? Who knows? Right? Who knows? But, if you have this, you can see my handsome face. <laughs> Is it true? If not handsome, at least smiling face, you know. Every day, every day on our television network, I host a daily talk show where we share the deep things of God. Some of the things that I have no liberty to share in this atmosphere, but on our network, I freely share them because I now have a different audience. Now, when I come to a meeting like this, according to the spiritual sensitivity of the crowd that is here, According to the spiritual need that is here, the Holy Spirit tells me, okay, this is what you should say. These are the things you should not say in this meeting because they're not necessary here. But in my television audience, I have a worldwide network of audience. You know, not only we have one television network, but if you look at this other postcard that is in your brochure, God led us to plant, just like planting a church, plant 12 channels all over the world in 12 different languages. We have a channel in India, over Europe. Then we have in a Spanish channel in South America. And then a channel in the US. And a Portuguese channel over Brazil. And a Russian channel over the Russian-speaking nations and a Hebrew channel over Israel, and an Arabic channel over the Middle East nations, a Chinese channel over China, and in Australia, English channel, and a channel over Africa that covers the whole continent of Africa, and a channel in the Far East that is primarily targeting the Philippines. You know, the, the channel in Hebrew we are the second Christian television station to receive permission from the Israeli government to be broadcast into all the cable homes in the whole of Israel. Amen. So your programs will go all over Israel. So this coming Rosh Hashanah, on September 25th, we will officially launch Angel TV in Israel. It's been already going on in the air for the last one year. But this Rosh Hashanah, that's when our agreement with a cable company, something similar to um, Direct TV. There is only one uh, Direct TV-like company in, for the whole of US, I mean, for the whole of Israel, and they are available in 600,000 homes all throughout Israel. And just last month, we got the permission from the Israeli government that they approve our channel. No 
two other Christian channels from America were rejected, you know. So it was a great grace and miracle of God that we got approved. Amen. Because it was the will of God. You know, the Lord spoke to me very clearly that two witnesses are going to come very soon in Israel. And our network's job is to televise life. There are three and a half hours, three and a half years of ministry all over Israel. So that everybody in every nook and corner of Israel will see the awesome power and glory that will be displayed when the two witnesses will be on this earth. Not only Israel, but all over the world. So this, so at the back of this cart, we have the names of all the satellites. This is for you to pray for us. Can I count on you to pray? So you can keep this cart in your Bible. And when you, each time you open your Bible, please lay your hands on our satellites. You know, these satellites need protection. Because in the past few months, the satellite over Middle East, our signals were jammed by the Muslim government. So the signals could not go through. The signals over Russia, uh, China were jammed. So we want to pray for protection. So that's why we have the names of all the satellites at the back of this card so that you can name them one by one and lay your hands lay your hands on all these channels and pray a prayer of blessing plead the blood of jesus over them will you do that thank you so much shall we all stand up for a word of prayer your ears. our gracious and loving heavenly father we bow our hearts, we bow our heads unto you on this, your blessed and sanctified day. Thank you, Holy Father, for gathering all your dear children from far and near today. It has been your good pleasure to gather your dear children unto yourselves. Now we pray that you will open the eyes of our understanding and give us a listening heart. Give us an understanding ear that we may hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to the churches in these last days. Thank you, Spirit of God, for being present in our midst like the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. You have come to be in our midst. And now I pray, stretch forth your wings and cover every one of them under your loving embrace. Fill them, Lord, with a peace beyond all understanding right now right now give them a great peace lord giving them great peace thank you father thank you hide me lord behind your cross and let the words of your mouth flow out today in jesus name we pray Amen. Please be seated. When I entered into this auditorium this evening, while the worship was going on, suddenly I felt a call in the spirit. And when I quieted myself, I felt my soul taken up before heaven. And there I stood before the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord spoke to me and said, This is the words you shall tell my people. So this is what the Lord Jesus told me about all of you precious saints. Firstly, 
concerning this place, the Lord Jesus said, This place has been chosen. This place does not mean this auditorium, maybe this city or this region. Has been chosen as a place of refuge during the end times. Many who are persecuted, many who are chased, many who are chased away, many who are driven out, many who will run for protection, they will come to this place. This place will be a place of refuge. Once again, the healing stream that began during John G. Lake's time will begin to flow in this region. The wounded will come. The wounded will come to be healed. And when the Lord spoke those words, I saw an elderly woman. A, a person came to her with a broken leg. The, the leg was broken in two pieces. And the woman said, come and sit here. He sat on a table. She took those two pieces in Jesus' name. It got joined as one, like normal. And this will be done in this place of refuge. God has chosen this place as a place of refuge. You know, I know nothing about this city. I know nothing about this region. I'm coming here, like I told you, after 23 years. The only thing I knew about Spokane is that John G. Lake started his ministry here. That's all I know. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't even know if there were any prophetic words spoken about this area. I know nothing. But I'm telling you what I heard before the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ from his lips. So let me repeat one more time. This place has been chosen as a place of refuge during the end times. Secondly, the Lord said, tell them, I am coming for a people who will make themselves ready for me. He's not just simply coming for everybody. He's coming for a people who will make themselves ready. If you don't make yourselves ready, he will come, but you will not be called. If you read Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 9, the scripture says, Blessed are they who are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. See, blessed are they who are called. So what about those who are not called? The reverse is also true, you know. If those who are called are blessed, what about those who are not called? What about them? So which means there will be people who are not called. Like those foolish virgins who did not prepare themselves to meet the bridegroom. Now, if you read that parable very carefully, all the ten virgins went to meet the bridegroom. They all had lambs in their hands. But there was a difference. The wise prepared themselves for the eventuality of being left behind. The foolish were just overconfident. No, 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 we will not be left behind. The church will not go to the tribulation. The church will not this. The church will not that. The church will be raptured before the end comes. As a result, she was not prepared. There was no extra oil in her lamb. No extra oil. And way and behold, the bridegroom delayed his coming. He delayed. He was supposed to come at 8 p.m., but he delayed. So they didn't know when he was coming. Just when you thought the church would not go through the tribulation, suddenly 
you find that everybody is here and the mark of the beast has been introduced. Don't laugh. This is serious. You are going to face that. That will be the ultimate test of our loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate test. That will be the ultimate test of purification for the church. Ultimate test. The ultimate test of the fire that you will have to walk through. Just like the three Hebrew boys. Till they were thrown into the fiery furnace, they sit with such a resolve. Our God is able to protect us. But, even if he does not, we will not buckle down. Look at that faith. Our God is able to protect us, even if he forsakes us. Even if he does not answer our prayer. Even if he does not care for us. We will not bow down. We will not bow down. Because our ultimate faith is in the God who does not forsake. That was the faith they had. And they were thrown into the fire. Till the moment the Lord just stood back, you know, to see whether they really meant what they said. Whether will you chicken out before reaching near the furnace? Some do. Some do. He that endures till the end, only they will be safe. Not all. You need to endure till the end. Till they were thrown into the furnace, you know, they held on to their faith. That was the problem with the foolish virgins. They were not prepared for the end times. They were not prepared. They belong to the group of hyper grace theology. They belong to the group which is very seeker friendly. They belong to that group. So everything is okay for them. If the, if he, the bridegroom said he's coming, he's coming. So why crucify the flesh? When the Lord has already finished all the works. Why? Why fast and pray? When the scripture says, if the bridegroom with, is with you, why you need to fast? You see how you can distort scriptures? Yeah, there's some preachers who preach that, you know. Why do you need to fast and pray? Because the bridegroom is with you. The Lord Jesus himself said that. So that's all works of the flesh. You need to walk by faith. Do away with all these works. Foolish virgins. Who rely on hyper grace. I am coming. For a people who have made themselves ready. Make yourselves ready. You know, in the 1950s in China, there was a leader called Mao Zedong. And when he came to power, he wanted to eradicate religion from China. So he introduced a policy called the Cultural Revolution. In 50 years, he wanted to totally eradicate the name of Jesus from China. Totally get rid of all the churches. Bulldoze all the churches. Bulldoze everything. All religion out. Even if it is the Buddhism. He died. But the church is still alive in China. Okay, this is not the best part of the story. The best part of the story is this. The church grew in hundreds and millions of believers during that 50 years of persecution. It grew abundantly. So, false 
scholars of missions in the US wanted to find out what is the secret for the church growth in China during the Cultural Revolution. So they went to China and they interviewed older ministers, older believers, older elders, those who are 70 years and, or, and above. They interviewed every one of them. Tell us what's your secret? What's your secret? And then they collected all their research and findings together and they found one answer in unison. The answer is this. What is the secret? They were prepared for persecution. That was their secret. Their church elders, their church pastors prepared their churches for persecution. They said, be strong, be bold. Persecution is coming. We will be persecuted. We will be martyred. But never deny your faith. They taught the church. Because they taught the church to go through the fire, they were all prepared, they were all ready. When the time of persecution came, none of them recanted their faith. No one renounced. They all stood firm because they had built up their faith from their little ones to the older ones. They all were strong. Many little children died as martyrs, you know. Little children, young people, they died as martyrs. But none of them lost their faith. Because they were ready. If this comes to our modern times, how many of us will survive? You tell me. What about the church in the US? The church in the West? Come on, the, even the church in the East has now is now swallowing hyper grace doctrines. They are adopting seeker friendly churches now. So we are getting corrupted, thanks to you. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming for a people who will make themselves ready. Thirdly, the elderly, and all you precious senior citizens, the Lord has not forgotten you. Very specifically, he spoke to me about you. He said, the elderly should be like mothers who carried their children to welcome the Lord Jesus when he came into Jerusalem. If you read Matthew chapter 21, you'll find that when the Lord Jesus Christ entered into Jerusalem on a donkey, there were some mothers carrying their babies. They went forth before and after to welcome the Lord Jesus. The mothers were carrying the babies. And the babies were crying and making a lot of noise. Human ears heard them as babies crying noises. But that's not how heaven heard. If you read the scriptures, heaven records the babies crying as, Hosanna to the King of Glory. Welcome. That's how the Bible records it. That's how God heard it. It's not babies cries. The babies were praising and welcoming the King of Glory into Jerusalem. And the mothers were carrying them. So likewise, the elderly people in these times, you should carry in your prayers the young to fulfill their call and destiny. That is your duty. You know, the other day, I shared with you that when the prophetic anointing is poured upon the old people, do you mind if I use the word old instead of senior citizens? Is it okay? Okay. And do you also mind if I use the word fat instead of large? Is it okay, everybody? Okay, all right. Where I come from, a fat is a fat, you know. We don't try to be politically correct by saying large, extra large. <laughs> is it okay, everybody? 
You still love me? How much? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> now, yesterday afternoon I shared with you that when the prophetic anointing is poured upon the older people, they will dream dreams. Now, what kind of dreams will you dream? This is a wonderful revelation that the Lord gave to a uh, saintly prophet in India. Just like Joseph dreamed a dream about the end times during his time and how to protect the people from famine. See, Pharaoh saw the dream, but Joseph received the interpretation. Fed cows and lean cows. So what to do? See, Joseph was given a strategy. What to do? Likewise, all you precious saints, senior citizens, God will speak to you dreams. In the dreams, God will speak to you how to care for the young people, the dangers that are coming, the strategies for protection. So when the hurt comes to you, you're going to encourage them. Say, no, don't worry. If this city persecutes you, this is what God showed me, this is what you shall do. God will speak to you. That's the purpose. You have a great ministry in the end times. My dearly beloved old people, your time is coming soon. Amen. You are going to do great exploits for God. Your age and your physical disabilities or infirmity, not to worry about all that. God has got all that figured out what to do with you. You can be a VA, you can have this disability or that disability, you cannot run, you cannot walk, whatever, doesn't matter. God has got all planned out how he wants to use you. So remember this. You have a very important job to carry the young people in your prayers. They should learn to pray in the spirit. This is what you need to learn. To learn how to pray in the spirit. When you do, you'll be taken in the spirit and also bodily to do the Lord's work. See, you may have arthritis problem. You may be in a wheelchair. You may be in whatever disability that you have. Or you're very big, you cannot move anywhere. You can't travel on the plane because the plane charges you for two seats. That's what they do now, you know. They charge you for two seats or they ask you to fly first class. Okay, you can't travel anywhere. All you have to do is pray. When you start praying, suddenly you find that you are in a strange place. And then the Lord will tell you, speak that word to that person. You are in a strange place. You are translated. You are taken in the spirit. Your body doesn't go, your spirit goes. And you are standing there and praying. Or you'll be taken bodily. You find that you are translated to a certain place and there to give a word. Okay, don't worry. This is what the Lord Jesus is telling you. Or a pastor in prison. Or a pastor or a people under persecution. The Lord suddenly brings you there. He said, okay, give them this word. Don't worry. All is well. All is good. Everything is under control. Everything will be all right. Soon you'll be out. This kind of things. This is the ministry that you're going to do in the last days. See, not exciting? See, for such a time as this, God has kept you alive. Amen. Don't worry about any earthquake that will come to the northwest. No earthquake, no storms, no any kind of disaster is going to take your life because God has a job for you. Amen. You have an assignment. 
It's not mission impossible, it's mission possible. Amen. Now the young people, I like to confirm when uh, our dear brother Bruce Allen called up the three young people to the front, I like to confirm that whatever he spoke is everything right on the dot from the throne of God. And this is what the Lord Jesus told me about the young people. The young people should prepare themselves in holiness. You know, I was sitting down and quickly scribbling everything. You saw me scribbling before you called them up. The young people should prepare themselves in holiness. Keep yourselves free from defilement. Because God is going to use you to do great exploits. And you will run faster than horses. You know, if you read 1 Kings chapter 19, or chapter 18, after three years of drought, Elijah tells his servant, okay, rain is going to come. And he prays. He puts his head between his knees and he prays. Now, that is not ordinary praying. No? Ordinary praying, you kneel down to pray. Why put the head between the knees? That is a prophetic gesture. That is like a key that opens into the prophetic spiritual realm. It opens when you do certain prophetic gesture. But don't, don't practice that at home. I have a hard time with my full pack to put my head between my knees, you know. I have to, I have to get back in shape. <clears throat> see he's a prophet he was given see, remember I told you the other day you cannot copy methods but you can copy principles that is his method given to him it may not apply to you but God may give you another method but you can copy the principles model principles principles work for everybody across the board. Methods will not work for everybody. What works for one person, it will not work for another person. So he put his head between his knees and that opened a door. When he, when he prayed like that, he was translated up to heaven. He was there. And the Lord told him, now rain is going to come. This is what's going to happen next. So get ready. So he came out of that experience. He told he looked around, he saw Ahab, come on, get ready, you better run now, because the rains are coming, you don't even have an umbrella, you don't have a raincoat, you don't have an umbrella, you're going to get wet, drenched in the rain, so come on, run. So Ahab, you know, he believed Elijah, how can you not believe after you have killed 850 of his prophets, so you better run for your life. Because Ahab thought he may be the 851. <laughs> so he mounted on his chariot. Now please listen carefully. The chariot was pulled by at least two horses, if not four. So as the chariot was moving, suddenly he saw someone zoom pass by. Have you watched this old drama series called Six Million Dollar Man? <laughs> if you're more than 50, you must have seen all those old dramas. He runs fast. Now, I made a little research, you know. A horse runs. The fastest is 40 miles per hour in a sprint. So, two horses running at 40 miles per hour, pulling a chariot with Ahab on it. You minus the drag and everything, the horses could have run at least 35 miles per hour. So the horses are running at 35 miles per hour. The fastest man in the world can run 20 miles per hour. 
So, which means the fastest man running 20 miles per hour is no match for a horse. Everybody agrees? Okay. Here comes Elijah and he is running faster than a horse, which means he must have run more than 45 or 55 or 60 miles per hour. Now, this is humanly impossible. So, how did that happen? How did that happen? This is where the anointing of the horse comes. I am trying to really hold back, you know. You okay? All right. If you have the faith to believe, do you? Okay, if you have the faith to believe. A few months ago, I was fasting and praying in Israel. The Lord called me to fast and pray. So during those seven days of fasting and praying, I had many, many visitations from the prophet Elijah and many prophets of old. So one day, I saw the prophet Jeremiah. He entered into my room, riding on a horse, white horse, beautiful white horse. And I saw another horse stand beside him. And after he finished talking with me, he said, that horse is your horse. I said, my horse? Yes, it is your horse for transportation. So I asked him, how is that going to help? He said, now see. And the horse, so before that he said, this horse has an anointing. When it comes upon you, you will run faster than any known man's speed. She said, how, sir? Then the horse walked. Are you sure you can believe? Okay. The horse walked and entered right inside me. When it entered right inside me, I turned back and I saw the other half of the horse body. And I could see me, but from my back, the horse body is jutting out. And I was told, this is what happened to Elijah when he ran that day faster. He said, this anointing come and you run faster. In the last days, especially the young people, you are going to get this kind of transportation. See the horse, there are different kinds of horses, you know. Some horses with wings, some horses like what Brother Bruce Allen shared last night with uh, the unicorn and these are other horses, battle ready horses. And the other horses that are on chariots, different, different kinds. You know, you all have a transportation. If you read Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 16, there it is written, the Lord Jesus Christ rides on a white horse. Have you? Not only the Lord Jesus Christ, it also says, and the armies in heaven. Not one army, you know. It's in the plural. Armies in heaven. So, which means, there are different kinds of battalion. Many different kinds, not just one kind. Not one kind of an army. Have you seen the movie Narnia? And let me tell you something, okay? C.S. Lewis did not simply write stories for children. He wrote what he saw in visions. He was shown in visions, you know. And to make them acceptable, readable for everybody, he wrote them like in an allegorical parable form. But I tell you, whatever is there is all real. Real. They are not imaginary. They are real. Especially the first part of the 
the first one, you know, the first in the series. The, the last day, the last, but the climax of the movie, you'll find a war that takes place between the Ice Queen and Aslan's army. Now, what you see there is what is going to take place in the last days. The Lord's army versus Satan's army. And you see in Aslan's army, there's humans are there, plus all these other armies. It's exciting, you know. Why did you give me that look? <laughs> Do you believe? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Any, anyone disbelief here? All belief? Shall I continue? Yeah. So, the young people, you will run faster than horses because of this anointing that will come. So, get ready. Now, my dear brother Bruce, the Lord Jesus told me about you. You have an important role in this move that is coming. You are to establish a training center to train young people to move in the miraculous. You never told me anything about yourself, you know. This, this word came to me. So my heart.